This uh, ID card was the key for dividing our tribe because the Belgium, uh, they used that uh, for dividing uh, the tribes because in that uh, identification card, it was written that if you belong to Hutu tribe or if you belong to Tutsi tribe or if you belong to Tua a tribe. So uh, when they were doing that in a, in, in a process of dividing, they said ah, Tutsis because the king in that time the king was from the Tutsi tribe. Mm. They said, uh, you, you look apparently like us. You are taller like us. You have a long no nose like us. You mostly wise like us. We can work so with we you guys. We can work with you guys. But the other guys, mm. Yeah. So, and that's how they, they gave advantages, benefit mm -hmm. to Tutsi tribe. They said, you, you can go to school because mm -hmm. you're wise. You can, mm -hmm. you can rule over uh, other, other tribes. Mm -hmm. And that was the, 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 the strategy they used for dividing, mm -hmm. creating the jealousies among the tribes. So they took uh, the Tutsi, that created uh, the, uh, the jealousies among the main tribe, Tutsi and, 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 the, and the Hutu. So, and then uh, after that, because they gave the benefit, the benefit to the Tutsi tribe to go to school, uh, they prepared them to be the rulers for mm -hmm. tomorrow, and then, then they return back. And remember, the Tutsi tribe are the minorities in a country. Mm. The Hutu tribes are the majorities in a country. Uh, the Tua is like 1%. Of the population, they are just you know a few in the numbers. So then, after a while, they turn back to the Hutus. They said, "How come you, who are majorities in a country, these minorities can just rule over you? The king is from them. They are going to school. You are not going to school. You are just farmers, just hoeing uh, plantations mm -hmm. and stuff. How come you need to take revenge?" The country is yours. You are the majorities. And then they equipped them. And then see, in 62, in 1973, uh, there were a coup d'etat done by the former president who orchestrated the genocide in 1994, uh, uh, the president, Habyarimana president, Juvenal. That was the former president. Uh, he did the coup d'etat. Where is he around now? No, he died. He did. He died. Yeah. Um, but he's the one who take over. He was the Ministry of Defense in that time with the, the, the first uh -huh. government in Rwanda. He said, you know, I, I want to unify this country. I want to bring back the Tutsis. And many, many of them, many of uh, Tutsis who were living in the neighbors as refugees, when he declared that, that he's a, a country of unity, a country of unity and reconciliation, most of them came. 1990, the refugees who were outside the country, Tutsis, from the Tutsi tribe, they said, we need to come back in a country. We want to come peacefully. We don't want to fight. They wrote a letter to the UN. They said, would you help us to come back in a country? The UN ignored that. They didn't intervene. They, they, they said the same thing to the former government. They said, we need to come back to Rwanda because Rwanda is a land of Hutu, Tutsi, and Tua. It's not exclusive to us as the Tutsis. And uh, the former government said, you know, Rwanda is a small country. It's very densely. You are not able to come because you don't have place. So when the, 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 the government, the former government, saw that pressure, they said, we need to do something. And that's how in 90 they planned the genocide. Mm. They said, um, now as these Tutsis are planning to come to, in a country, we need to do something to avoid that. And they, they use uh, the media, they use the t television, they use uh, 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 everything uh, in their own position to cultivate that uh, hatred 
and they said, you know, if these Tutsi come to the country, you're going to lose jobs, you're going to lose your houses, you're going to lose your land, so you need to take care of that problem right now. And that's how, you know, every Hutu was, was ready to kill uh, in uh, 1994 when uh, uh, the genocide started. Uh, they killed uh, each one from the Tutsi tribe who were in a country. They said, if we kill people in a country, when these labels would be coming, they will never have any, any, any support from the inside. So we'd be able to kill them very easily. And that's how the genocide started in April 1994. And, and that, was... uh, that uh, took over than a million people in just 100 days. Whoa. That's how they did the genocide. I have a feeling that they, uh, the local people don't want that to happen again. Yeah, you know, um, uh, it's, um, it's strange because people are saying never again, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, just uh, by word without any tangible uh, actions. Mm -hmm. If you want, if you pretend to say never again, you need to help these people who survived the genocide, mm -hmm. these orphans and the widows who are uh, suffering. Uh, uh, they need to be helped, they need, be, they need to be educated, mm -hmm. they need to have jobs, they need to get involved in activities, mm -hmm. generating income that they can develop the community. And that's how we can rebuild this nation. It's not just by word, pretending to talk talk without any tangible actions on the ground. And that seems to be what your mission is all about. That is our mission. That is the ERM ministry. We want to rebuild what the enemy destroyed in rebuilding the nations, uh, bringing uh, the skills from mm -hmm. the, the, the basis of the community that we can uh, be able to create uh, uh, how, income. When, what year did you start your ministry? Uh, the ministry started in 1996, uh, when I get back uh, after uh, the genocide. Uh, That's where I start with nine orphans and I took them I place them in a family. We don't we don't promote building orphanages, and I will tell you why. Because um, psychologically, it doesn't really help. Uh, these orphans and the widows who were abandoned, helpless, isolated by themselves. When you took them in the orphanages again, you you are doing the same thing. You isolate them in the orphanages, and the statistics show that most of these kids raised in the orphanages become prostitutes or street kids. And people are coming to the West and say, we have a feeding program, we have a street ministry, but you feed them today, you left the country, what gonna happen to them tomorrow? They taste a good food, they want to get that food, they are leaving their own house, Hall because it's a poor house. Mm -hmm. They will be willing to go to the to the street because it's where they are getting food. So it doesn't really help us. It's hurting us. Just feeding them is not the issue. It's not the issue. One of the things you mentioned earlier that um, people can do, you have uh, helping with building, mm -hmm. woodworking, right. also holding babies. Giving That's the right. physical touch. Mm -hmm. So yeah. women can be used uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, they can very, very uh, uh, impacting these uh, uh, kids, uh, these uh, orphans who uh, did not, not have the love, the warm uh, love from families. Uh, you know, the, the first uh, qualification I ask people who want to come with me in the missions, I said, if you have the love of Christ in you, you are, well, you are well qualified because these orphans, these widows, need a love of Christ because that is mostly needed mm -hmm. among them. Well,